To get started, we're simply going to install the Bevy Game Engine Crate and then also render some 3D objects to the screen. First, we need to create a new Rust binary using the new the cargo new command. So I'm going to call mine third person tutorial. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and open mine up in VS Code. And then I'm also going to navigate to the project in, in my integrated terminal here. That way when I have to use the terminal, I don't have to bounce back and forth between different apps. Um, okay, so now that we got our project created, let's go ahead and install the Bevy Game Engine Crate. And to do that, we're going to use cargo add Bevy. All right, perfect. So if we look in our cargo toml file, uh, you'll see that we have the Bevy Game Engine Crate right here, 0 0.11, which is the latest version as of this recording. Um, all right, now I'm just going to go ahead and build, uh, or we should go ahead and build this this project now since we've added a new crate, and this will take a, a couple minutes. And in the meantime, we can start adding some boilerplate code here. First things first, we need to uh, import the, the Bevy prelude just like so. So um, now we can get rid of this, this hello world statement. And then here's just some more boilerplate code. Uh, and we're going to add the default plugins. Uh, the default plugins adds things like the the window that our, our game will be running on. Um, I'm honestly not too sure what else it adds, but I'm sure you could dive into that and there's probably a long list of, of, of default plugins that it adds. So let's take a look at that. Looks like it's finished. Um, just to make sure nothing's going wrong, I'm gonna go ahead and just run it with cargo R. And we should just get a blank window here. Yep, blank window and I, I still have MSI afterburner up, so I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that so that doesn't distract us. All right, very cool. Uh, now we can go ahead and write our first system. So we're going to first create a floor that the player will be standing on and running around on. Um, so I'm gonna create a new system called spawn floor. And we're gonna need a few different parameters here. First, we need our commands. That's gonna actually spawn this entity into the world. Um, then we need uh, meshes. Uh, this will control things like what the what the object will look like if we want a square or a sphere or a cylinder, things of that sort. And that's just a resource just like so. And then we need one more resource called materials. And this will be in control of, of how that mesh is gonna look. So what color it'll have and so forth. Uh, all right. So we're going to create the floor object here. I, I personally like to store it in a variable first and then spawn it with commands. I just think it looks nicer. Um, but you can directly, you can skip the whole assignment if you want and just write commands.spawn and write everything inside of here. So this is just my personal preference. Uh, and we're going to use a PBR bundle. And then we're going to have uh, the mesh right here. So mesh.add. This is a, a little robust here but uh just bear with me so this is kind of like the constructor right here and then now let's go ahead and give it a color i think i wrote that wrong there we go now let's add a color with the materials and i'm going to make mine dark green so it'll be sort of like a, a somewhat of a grass if you will and then we need to finish it off with the default parameters here or default settings. And now you can use the commands parameter to spawn the floor just like so. And okay. Yep. Uh, now we can go ahead and add this system uh, to the main function and to do it, we're going to write, add systems and then this will be a startup system so it's only going to run one time at the startup uh, and then you can go ahead and specify the system right there okay so let's go ahead and run it just to get a proof of life here 
and we didn't get any errors so that's great but you'll notice it's still a blank screen and that's because there's no camera uh, that we've spawned yet into the world so it doesn't matter what you put into the world if you don't have a camera then it's not going to you're not going to see anything it's going to be a black screen like this every time so with that being said let's go ahead and spawn a camera and i'm going to also put this in its own function i just like to break my functionality out as much as possible uh, but we're going to call this one spawn camera this one will be a little easier. We only need one parameter and that's the commands. And then let's go ahead and store the camera 3D bundle into its own variable, just like we did with the floor. And we need to give this a transform. So it's starting position here uh, from X, Y, Z. So it'll be a VEC3. And I kind of have these values calculated already. Um, so sometimes it takes a little bit of playing around with to be able to get it to focus on like the floor exactly how you want it to. But this is, uh, if you follow along with this, it should be just fine. And then it's gonna be looking at this location right here. And then finish it off with the default settings and then use the commands to spawn it. Uh, again, we need to add this to our startup and we need to wrap this in a tuple since there's more than one system. And let's go ahead and, and run this and see if we can actually see something this time. Oh, let's see. Transform undeclared. Use of undeclared type transform. What did I do? Oh transform transform i don't have my rust analyzer extension installed because it, there's a lot of pop-ups in intellisense when i'm typing and i figured it might be distracting but i might enable that for the next tutorial just so we don't run into issues like this all right now let's go ahead and run it and there we go okay so you can see the floor but it's kind of dark if you if you notice um and that's because we don't have a light source at all so the next thing we're gonna do is create a light. So let's create one more system called spawn light. And I think we only need the commands. Yep, we only need the commands parameter for this one as well. I'm gonna use a point light. Uh, give it an intensity of intensity of 2000. That should do. Might be overkill. And then let's also give it a transform. Uh, and I just want it to sit basically on top, uh, like floating above directly center mass of, of the floor that we have. So I'm going to keep the X and Z values at zero and just put the Y value at five. So it should just be floating right above the floor. Okay, now let's add this to our startup systems here. Uh, cool, let's run it one more time. Okay, perfect. Now you can actually see the floor a little bit better on this one. Now let's create a player object. And to start with, we're just gonna have a, a square, um, a cube. And then later on, you can download the, I'll have a, a link to a player object that you can actually download, or you can make your own, whatever you want. Um, and it'll be a little bit more realistic in the sense that it'll have like a front and a back. So the front will rotate according to where the camera and direction that you're moving is. Uh, so if you have a cube, it kind of, everything looks symmetrical. All right, let's create the spawn player function. And for this one, we need the commands. We're actually going to need, we're going to need all of these, just like the floor, because uh, it's going to be very similar to the floor. So I'm just going to steal them straight from the floor there. And then also it's going to be similar to, oh, no, not that similar. I won't copy it. 
we'll just make it from scratch here. All right, so player equals uh, PBR bundle mesh meshes dot add mesh from shape cube this time and we'll give it a uh, dimensions of one by one and then let's go ahead and give it a color as well i think i'm going to make mine blue oops yeah there we go and then also a transform to give it a starting position And I'm going to make it at 0 0.5. Um, actually, I'll make it at 0, so that way you can see why I do want it at 0 0.5. So we'll run it twice here in just a second. And go ahead and add it to the startup functions or systems. And let's run it. Okay, so here's the player, um, and you can see the camera's looking directly at it, which is great. Uh, but it doesn't look like it's a complete cube. It's more of like a rectangle, right? And that's because we have the starting position right, where is it? Right here at zero. Um, and it's a, it's a one, it, the unit of measurement is one for the dimensions of the square. So only half of it is sticking above and half of it's sticking below. Um, that's because of it's it's relative uh, to the well, it's not relative, but it's it, the the it's it's just interfering with where the floor is at right now. So to fix that, we're gonna make this 0.5. Run it one more time, and you'll see that it'll look like it's sitting directly on top of the floor. Perfect. Okay, so that's it for the first tutorial. In the next tutorial, we're actually going to break this code up into different files a little bit just to keep our organization cleaner uh, the farther along we go and the more code we add. All right, see you in the next one.